Hey everyone, and welcome back to Ask Shane Anything, where you can literally ask me anything. This show is the result of the Ask Shane Anything tier on our Patreon. It's $7 or more per month. Big thanks to everybody who contributes at that level for making this happen. And we have a big episode for you guys today because I just asked for new questions. You guys, I literally have like, I'm not exaggerating, like almost 40 questions. But anyway, all these questions today are about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I know you guys are coming down to it. Then last like wave of pre-orders may be coming. You have to decide. I'm going to help you pull that trigger. First up, we have a question from Suicide King on Sifted. I have been getting frustrated with all the timed exclusive slash actually exclusive game announcements from PlayStation. If PS5 is your main console, it doesn't really matter, but I prefer to play third party games on my Xbox and wish it was clear which games were timed exclusives and for what length of time. What are your thoughts on timed exclusives and the lack of details that usually accompany them? Okay, I, uh, I talked about this on Game Face a little bit. I thought that people were overreacting to this. Um, I do think that it's annoying. I do think that they should supply that information right up front to help you make your purchase decisions. I agree it was a little dastardly of Sony to not do that uh, when it announced some of these games. However, this is also something that in even five months time, I don't think anyone's gonna think about. Right now, everyone's on edge because they have to make a big decision. This isn't cheap. These things are like 500 bucks. Um, you know, depending on which version you're getting. That's a big purchase decision for a lot of people, especially right now with so many people unemployed in the economy where it is right now. So I do not take this stuff lightly. One thing I would say is you say you like to play third party games on Xbox. I'm hoping that's because you like the Xbox controller a lot more and not for some other reason, because we just don't know yet which of these systems is going to have the better third party support as far as how the games run um, on each platform. So that's kind of an X factor. I don't know that I would make my decision assuming that everything's gonna run best on Series X. I don't think we know that yet. Time exclusives, I really don't have a huge issue with. Um, all The platform holders are trying to give value to their owners. And look, they're also trying to convince people to buy their console. It's a part of the business. I mean, it, it happens in pretty much every form of entertainment. A publisher is going to pay for the film rights or the script rights or whatever. I mean, it happens in pretty much every entertainment industry. So I don't see why gaming should be any different, but I do agree that they need to be a little more transparent with this stuff. Uh, the good news really is that we kind of found out what was the real story was like the next day. It's not like I'm sitting here right now and we don't know. Um, and they haven't come out yet. So I think it's a little bit of an overreaction. I'm not saying you're overreacting, Suicide King. I think people right now are just looking for stuff to kind of go after, uh, particularly if you're online and you have Xbox fans and PlayStation fans. I think they're on both sides are just kind of looking for any chinks in the armor and they're going to go after them if they can. <laughs> Next up, we have a question also from Sifted from P. Tor. He asks, what are you most excited about for Generation 9? And also, do you have any concerns for this new batch of consoles, such as a lack of true exclusives for the new machines? I have no concerns about lack of exclusives for the new machines. Um, I've been through so many console launches at this point that have just been utter trash and huge disappointments that already what I see coming from both consoles, I would say, um, but more PlayStation, I'm 100% okay with. I mean, having a remake of Demon's Souls available at launch is a pretty big deal. That's a big launch game for PlayStation. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's the fact. That's a big, big launch game for PlayStation. And then you have Destruction All-Stars and Astro's Playroom or whatever, you know, the pack-in that comes with uh, PlayStation 5. So really have one big exclusive. Um, then I turn to Xbox Series X. I mean, you're kind of right. There isn't that one big like game that's launching with the console that's only available for the console. But as we just saw with the last question with Suicide King, a lot of people like Xbox for the backwards compatibility or third party stuff. So again, I think this is something that everyone's freaking out about now, but I think in the case of PlayStation, you're gonna get you know consistent releases. Miles Morales is gonna come out in the launch window. 
Um, and sure, some people will be playing it on PS4, but if you have a PS5, you're gonna be playing on your PS5 and it's gonna look amazing. So it feels to me like it's a lot of, sort of like the Xbox Defense Force trying to create a false equivalency between the two consoles. I'm not saying you are, uh, I think you're asking a legitimate question, but I think when you go on Twitter and social media and stuff, I think when this is brought up, I think that's what you're seeing. Um, again, uh, the console wars aren't gone. They, they still happen, and you can find it if you not even if you actually don't have to really look all that hard. If you just go look at a story on uh, Twitter about either one of these consoles, you can see where all this stuff is coming from. So um, it's a little disappointing. I mean, most consoles, best case scenario, launch with one really good exclusive. We're getting that with the PlayStation Five. We're not getting it with Series X, but I do think that the backwards compatibility of Series X helps it out a little bit. Hi next up, we have a question from Sifted OG Mick Womble. What do the next few months look like for people like me who couldn't pre-order a next-gen console and don't have a PC? Should we go on a gaming hiatus and forego playing Cyberpunk, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, etc. until we can get a new console? Uh, well, I'm assuming you have a PlayStation 4, so play that. <laughs> Um, I mean, unless you're like a crazy video file or you work for like Digital Foundry or something and everything just has to be like the highest fidelity, these games are still going to be great on PlayStation 4. They're not going to look quite as good. They're still going to be great games. The design's going to be the same. The story's going to be the same. The sound's going to be the same for the most part. Um, so yeah, just play them on whatever you've got. Like, I don't like not play these games because you want to wait until you get the next gen console to play them. I would definitely not do that. I mean, it, you don't want to be out on the wilds of the internet having not played Cyberpunk 2077. You just don't. Uh, there's going to be no way to avoid spoilers for that game. You're going to get something ruined. Um, I don't think that the risk of having big parts of the game kind of ruined is worth the increase in fidelity you're going to get to play it on PS5 or Xbox Series X. So I wouldn't sweat it, McWomble. I don't think it's a big deal. If you're like McWomble and you tried maybe and didn't get one, I'm sorry, that really does suck. And a pre-order is a whole other story question. I'm surprised none of you guys asked me about that, but you didn't. Um, and that's a whole other story, but there's always going to be FOMO, right? Is that maybe what you're feeling, the fear of missing out? I totally get that. Um, I would definitely have FOMO if I did not get a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. So I understand it. Um, but for a person in your position, one, keep trying. Don't give up. Keep trying to get yourself a console. Uh, and two, if you don't, play these awesome games and don't think twice about it. All right, our last question for this episode is a big one. I'm being put on the spot for this one, and it comes from Billy Bo Baggins. Hi Shane, I have a pre-order secure for each next gen console, but it's down to the wire and I'm still unsure of which I am going to keep. I only intend to keep one. I am a huge advocate for backwards compatibility and build a sizable virtual library on Xbox. I am also a massive fan of Sony's output. If you were in my position, which would you choose? You had to go and do it, didn't you, Billy Bobaggins? You had to put me on the spot. Um, and you're in a unique position. Like a lot of times someone will say, well, I'm a huge fan of Sony's first party stuff. I don't care about playing old games. Or, you know, some people will say, I've put so much money into my catalog. I want to be able to play it in exclusives, whatever. There's going to be some on Xbox. In your case, you're on, you're on both sides of the seesaw here, which makes it difficult. So basically what you're asking me is all things equal, as far as my personal tastes and preferences are concerned, which one should I get? Um, and I mentioned this in an earlier response. Uh, there's a big X factor still left with these consoles. And that is, at least initially, which one are third party games gonna look and run the best on? Um, now, I would say, as I sit here right now, my best guess would be that will be Xbox Series X because it is kind of the raw horsepower machine with very simple architecture. So I think developers are going to be able to give minimal effort and still get pretty good results on Xbox Series X. And I think you'll really see that with like indies in particular. Um, and I think with PlayStation 5, its arch architecture is a little more complicated. Developers are going to have to dedicate a little more time uh, to writing to the metal for that machine to get good results. And I do think maybe ultimately they will get better results out of the PlayStation 5, but I feel like out of the gate, it might be Xbox Series X. So 
it's all about the games. We always say that, right? Um, and right now, I would say that Sony has a lot of money in the bank, and right now, Microsoft is writing a lot of checks. Right now, we know Sony's first party output is amazing. Uh, we have an inkling that in a year, two years, three years, four years definitely, five years definitely, that Xbox's first party output is going to be amazing. But it's not there yet. And a lot of it is just promise. Um, we, of course, Elder Scrolls 6, probably gonna be amazing. Starfield, probably gonna be amazing. But all these other smaller studios uh, that Microsoft has acquired, it's not quite as clear cut. And then you're starting to look at some of the first party stuff. I mean, Halo, what's going on with Halo Infinite? So I think the safest bet for a person, all things equal, is the PlayStation 5. Now, I will say this, I think you may think I'm crazy for the first few months when Digital Foundry starts doing side-by-side -side graphical comparisons between Series X and PS5 with third-party games. I would not be surprised at all if the games look and run better on Series X at first. Um, but to me, it's all about the games. And I, if I look at the lineups right now, the exclusive games for each one, it would be much harder for me to pass on PS5. Um, now the good news is, if you do get a PS5 and you wait on Xbox Series X, right around the time all those new studios start churning out content, that console price may have dropped by then. So you may get a Series X for 350 or at least maybe 400 by then. So that is what I recommend. Um, again, I think in week one or even before they launch, people you may be like, oh, look at Shane saying you should get a PlayStation and Series X games look so much better. I totally expect that could happen. Um, and I'm just telling you, for a long-term purchase and over the long haul, I'm calling PS5. All right, that's it. Great questions for this episode. Um, next week, we'll probably have a couple next-gen questions, but some more cultural stuff and some fun stuff as well. Uh, again, thanks to everyone who pledges any amount of money. But for those of you who pledge $7 a month or more to get this show, thank you very much. I really enjoy doing this show. Uh, it's one of my uplifting moments of the week amongst all the work and the time that I put into Sifted. So thanks for asking great questions. I have enough questions to last for the next, like, almost to the end of the year. So we should be good for Ask Shane for a while. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.